everyone. Okay, I'm joined by the wonderful Lady Taylor today. So I'm going to be asking her a few questions. So I'm going to get started. Um, so what was the process like of finishing the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy and moving on to Strange? <laughs> um, it was uh, a sort of breakneck um, writing schedule, trying to get to the end. And so um, I, I was hugely relieved when I managed to finish. The deadline was before Christmas. And um, Simon going back. <laughs> I, I went to, I'll try to go on writing retreats when I'm finishing a book, um, like go away to a hotel or to a little house at the beach for um, a few days, and in this case it was really desperate, so I went for a week, um, and I wrote like 25,000 words in six days or something like that, which is like crazy for me, and I just re I remember, you know, it's pretty much as it is in the book, um, and it was just, I finally got into these scenes that I've been waiting to get to for so long, it was so exciting, I was so relieved to be done and be able to sent it to my editor and so then for a long time after that it was just sort of that relief and also that we had a really tight schedule for copy editing and proofreading and everything and so I didn't have time to really think about it and so it was sort of a few months later that it started to I started to miss the characters or realize that it was done and I had to you know figure out what I wanted to write next so it was sort of a delayed reaction at first it was just like oh, I'm gonna sleep for a month you know sort of thing but um, yeah yeah um, and are the Daughter of Milk and Bone and the Strange Dream of Worlds linked by the, is it the Seraphim? Because <laughs> I spotted that. Yes, what, you, what is your theory? So, <laughs> I know that obviously there was the 12 in, mm -hmm. and then they split into two groups of six and came through like the splits in the world. And I know that Laszlo went to tell the story. They made the splits. Yeah. yeah so. um, and when Laszlo was telling the story of the gods and the Seraphim when they come through, so I was like, oh, is yeah, that? Is yeah, it's okay, that? good, you got it. I mean, it's a very subtle. Link and um, but I think most people will understand. Yeah, but, yeah. So we know what happened to one half of the you know one of the six because um, Razgad and Elazael were part of that one and we know how they ended up. But we never you know we never found out what happened to the other ones. So conceivably they just kept going and kept going, opening world after world, and um, this may be one of those worlds. Do you think that all of your books could be like linked in that sort of way? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know, but you know, as I was writing this, there were certain things that, um, you know, creating a new world, there were certain things that you will find out more in the next book, and I was like, well, I've already created a multiverse, so why not, yeah. you know, Go tuck it in there. there. Yeah. <laughs> so, that was fun. Um, do you think you'd write any more Daughter of Smoke and Yeah, books? I hope so. Um, I didn't plan when I started writing Dreams of Gods and Monsters that it would take on that storyline that it did. I thought it was going to be more contained, and um, I knew that I wanted to end, like, with the scene that it ends on, but I hadn't intended to introduce, like, another pending <laughs> war, <laughs> huge pending war, um, and that just sort of snuck in, and I, I kind of resisted it for a while, but then I just went with it. Um, and I would like to tell that story someday, I hope so. Yeah. How do you go about your world building? Um, you know, I mostly do it as I go. I'll try to, I do a lot of thinking at the beginning, but, um, Try not to think of, I don't let myself uh, sort of think of everything. I'll, there will be things ahead, like for example, when I was writing the Daughter Trilogy, like with, there was this group of people called the Stellians, and um, I didn't really know anything about them except that, you know, Kiva was, I, you know, and I didn't make myself really figure out who they were until I came to them in the story, and then I started right. figuring out, you know, because I, I think just over time, you know, if you sort of sat down over the course of a couple of weeks before you started writing and, and had to think of everything in that span of time versus, you know, having your sort of imaginative power over the course of like a year and a half stretched out, like what I'm going to think of next year after I've got all of this that I've been living with um, and thinking of and it's going to be richer and yeah. I'm going to be able to like have, you know, devote more creative power to it, you know, in, in chunks of time. So I try to like leave it and also then I'll just know what I need more at that point. Yeah. yeah. Um, was there an easiest or hardest scene to write or align or in Strange the Dreamer? Um, the, the beginning was really hard. I, um, I mean, I started, it was initially supposed to be Sarai's story primarily. It was called The Muse of Nightmares. And I, I wrote a lot of different opening chapters trying to get into it. And even though I love the chapters, I could sense that it wasn't setting up the story that felt right. And so I just kept trying and I wrote like 30 or something. I mean, it was ridiculous. I spent like eight months trying to find my way into the story, and I was getting a little bit panicked. Um, and so that was probably the hardest until I finally, you know, discovered that actually it was maybe it was meant.
it to be Laszlo's story and um, and found my way in that way and then started to gain some momentum. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there aren't there isn't really an evil character alive at least in Strings of Dreamer. So did you want your readers to not hate any of the characters but kind of and not think oh this person needs to be defeated but sort of think oh they need to kind of work it out all together. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, obviously there is evil and there has there were terrible characters and um, we're dealing with the aftermath of, of, of terrible violence, but I didn't want to dwell in, I didn't want the reader to have to experience those scenes firsthand and I didn't want to write them. Um, the things that were done in Weep um, for, you know, for the past 200 years. And I was just, I wanted to look at the aftermath and two groups of survivors trying to pick up and carry on, you know, and I think we, we were more likely to see in a fantasy or adventure book the story of the war ending with the end of the war well, yeah. and the idea that that now everyone's okay or yeah. everyone's gonna be okay. And I, I wanted to look at what that's really like when you've got, you know, um, the winners and the losers or and how do they how do they pick up and heal and carry on and um, and you, we've got this great hero the God Slayer, who's done terrible things, and we've got this damaged child who's also done terrible things, but we understand completely why they've done everything they've done. And, um, you know, I think of soldiers who've come back from war and they've, you know, maybe they've, you know, helped to win a war and save a lot of lives, but they've also done things that yeah. they have to live with forever. I and want so. them, yeah. Um, so you've written some short stories as well. Mm -hmm. They sort of remind me like Angela Carter sort of thing. <sighs> <laughs> That's like the nicest thing anyone's ever said oh, to me. No. <laughs> so, like, in terms of all, like fairy tale inspired, yeah. so, do you are you the sort of the same thing, like fairy tale inspired? Um, I you know to a degree, um, but you know I'm Angela Carter inspired. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know that my my short stories that I've written are particularly fairy tale inspired. And now I'm thinking, what are they? <laughs> a little bit. I mean, subconsciously. In, <laughs> in Lipsetch, um the stories were uh, Goblin Market was yes. one of the inspirations, and one was um, Hindu mythology of hell, mm -hmm. and um, and then one was uh, I guess sort of Zoro. I don't know what the inspiration for Hatchling was, but it's all sort of in this map, mishmash of myth and history, and um, maybe not exactly fairy tales. Though I do think there's some fairy tale. Um, Inspiration in Strange the Dreamer. I was. It occurred to me at some point that Laszlo was kind of like a Cinderella character, you know, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Oh, that's. And so that um, Thion was a little bit like the the girl who had to spin gold, you know, in, in the Rumpelstiltskin story, you know, really that's trapped cool. by the ambitions of others, and um, and that Sarai's a little bit like a, a Rapunzel. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's such an interesting way. Okay, well, I've got some quick fire questions okay, to finish up. Okay, so. my, brain, my brain is not quick. <laughs> so, paperbacks or hardbacks? <sighs> well, hardbacks are more beautiful, but also harder to read in bed. Yeah. But so, so I'll say hardbacks. hardbacks yeah. Do you dog ear the pages? A, a paperback, maybe, but not a hardback. Okay. Do you bend the spine? No. <laughs> Do you judge a book by its cover? Of course. Yeah. I mean, you know, subconsciously. You do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would try to, try to, you know. But, See past it. Yes, but yeah. of course, but when you're looking at a, an array of books, books. You know, of course there's things that are going to yeah. draw your eye. Uh, cats or dogs? <laughs> I have cats now, I've had dogs before. Uh, <laughs> I'll say cats because I'm just out of loyalty to my current cats, but I love dogs. Good or evil? <laughs> Good. Though one of my favorite lines um, from a movie is from *The Wings of Desire*, a uh, movie by Wim Wenders, and there's these angels having a discussion about all the things that um, that that they're wistful about, that they wish they could be human. Um, and one of the lines is, "Just once to enthuse for evil." <laughs> like these angels going, "God, wouldn't it be great to be able to enthuse for evil?" Oh, that's cool. That was a very rapid fire answer, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. Hogwarts House? Gryffindor. Oh, cool. How about um, you? Uh, Rainbow. Uh, current TV obsession? Do you have one? No. No. Um, do you have a fictional world that you want to live in? <sighs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess nothing well, lots. Is coming, <laughs> nothing's coming to mind right now. I mean, you know Hogwarts, of course. Yeah. 
go back to school if you can go to Hogwarts. Same. Um, last question. What is Weep's real name? Oh, well, I do know, um, but I haven't it's written it down. And I can't actually think of what it is right now, but it's a beautiful name. Um, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to use it or if it's truly gone, you know? It seems oh, like it might be it doesn't look whether we will put it in or not. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to see if there's, if I can come up a with way. some way where it might still exist in the world. Because it seems like it, it would, you know, the way it, it scans it from what we know in this book, it would truly be gone, but... Yeah, so it might seem a bit forced if you, like, try and... Yeah, but we'll, we'll see. Like, we'll see what develops because it's, and if I don't use it for that, I'll use it for something else because oh. it's a good word. It's a good word. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching.